fireside chat with Farida Nabarema, who of course is the co-convener of the Africa Bitcoin Conference. She will be chatting with Jeff Booth, who is the general partner of Eagle Death Capital. All right, a round of applause for this pair. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. It is good to see you today. Um, I've hope, I hope you have enjoyed the conversation so far. Um, so this morning with Jeff Booth, we are going to have a very interesting and important conversation. Um, it is more about understanding the economics behind Bitcoin, but also Jeff is will help us see better ways the current monetary system, the global system, is affecting each one of us and how Bitcoin offers solutions and ways out. Um, I had a chance to read Jeff's book, um, The Price of Tomorrow, and it was a very eye-opening book in terms of helping me better grasp how the current debt-based system is literally tying each and every one of us, um, I would call the name, into poverty, or if I can be honest, for the vast majority of the globe, um, and into um, dependency as well to so many levels. So my first question to you, Jeff, um, evolves around the concept of deflationary technology. You talk about how technology is meant to improve our lives, to reduce the cost of life, but unfortunately, we witness the opposite. Can you help us better grasp that? Sure. Um, this is going to be, this should be really simple to understand. But it's going to be hard to understand because, uh, because I would say most people in the world are looking through a false system. Um, and, and here's what's here, the natural state of a free market is deflation. And every year, and, and I'll tell you why, because as entrepreneurs, what we do is we try to create more value in the world. And then if somebody uses the value we create, they wouldn't use it if prices went up. So they only use something if prices go down and it gives them more value. So you could say that the free market over a long enough time horizon is deflationary because we use the things that give us more value. And so that should be pretty obvious, and it should be pretty obvious in our lives because you use the things that drive more value. It's why you use Google. It's why you use a free calculator app. It's why you use all of the things in your life today. And we all do. We try to use things that give us more value, and the free market tries to do that. So that means that prices all over the world should be falling. And as technology moves faster, those fa prices should be falling faster and faster and faster, meaning the entire world should be getting richer every year and working less. But we live in a system that works exactly the opposite. Um, when, we, when, when you talk about inflation, um, what you're talking about is, I'm going to extract wealth from people at a faster rate than the, 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 the should, prices should be go, going uh, lower, and I'm going to extract wealth from people all over the globe to keep up a system uh, that, that requires me to extract more wealth. And that transfer, it's actually theft. At a, at a crazy scale, and it keeps some nations extraordinarily poor, and some people within it, in those nations extraordinarily poor, and a smaller, smaller group, a subgroup of people, very, very rich, because they're at the top extracting that wealth from everybody else on the planet. The system should not look like that, but it does look like that, and I would say virtually everybody in this room would measure all of their interactions by the system that's extracting their wealth. I think we are in a perfect country to talk about inflation because um, in the past year, Ghana, like many other countries in the world, has experienced um, a high level of inflation. And I think for Ghana, it was the worst, close to 40%, eventually leading to their insolvency with the, the adapters um, and leading the IMF to reintroduce a structural adjustment program for Ghanaians. So, the average Ghanaian saw the value of their currency fall down completely in the past one year. Um, and when you talk about inflation being a system of theft, how can, we, how can the average citizen understand that when they have the value of their currency drops and their government is unable to pay back their debt and they still have to cut on their cost of life in order to adjust, it is a system that is stealing money from them. Yeah, and, and that's why it's so hard to, to realize because we measure everything inside that system. 
So people measure their house prices, their food prices, um, everything from inside the system that's stealing y your wealth. And here's, here is the, here's why. Globally, there's $400 trillion of debt. Um, and, and, and the entire global system is a debt-based system. So if you tried to pay back the debt at $1 a second, it would take 12,873,000 years to pay back the debt. So think about that. The debt is already insolvent. But if somebody came to you tomorrow and said, everything is going to collapse, all banks are going to collapse, we don't have money to pay the debt, you'd say that would be a bad day. That would be a bad day. And so you vote for people who say, don't worry, we'll make it okay, we'll make up the money, and they, and they take more of your money by, saying, by, by diluting the, your money's value to be able to create inflation to pay back that insolvent debt. By the way, this is not just a Ghana problem. This is a US problem. This is a global problem. The problem in Ghana and the problem all over in Africa is you're further away from the, the, this, the top of the money monopoly. So it's a more acute problem for you than it is for the, for the people at the top of the money monopoly. Mm -hmm. in the, at the top of the money mo monopoly, which includes the IMF, which includes the US, which includes most of the Western nations, at the top of the money monopoly, they might experience inflation at 7%. And there'd be a whole bunch of people within those countries that would say, this is terrible because I'm getting my pocket picked I'm getting stolen from at 7%. It's actually more than 7% because you'd have to add the actual true nature of deflation to it. So it's probably something like 12% a year. Um, and they're mad and they're rising up against their, the, uh, their leaders. Over here, further away from the money monopoly, you, you produce the wealth extracted from here to keep that system in check is staggering. It's such a crime. It is, it's a global crime and what happens to people in Africa and, and, and um, to keep that system alive. Because as your nation, as, as your inflation goes up, remember inflation is the same thing as wage deflation, your labor goes down in real terms around the world. And that allows the US or other, other nations to extract your resources cheaper. So it's a, it is a feature of the system that keeps you poor. Not a, uh, it is a feature of the system that keeps you poor. And why I've become such an advocate of Bitcoin is, is it's measuring the true nature of the world. It's measuring, it, because assuming it stays decentralized and secure, which is, in my opinion, almost inevitable, then it is repricing the world no matter what anybody thinks. And so, so because it's fixed in currency units, it's measuring prices falling. Most people are measuring Bitcoin by the currency that's being debased. So they think Bitcoin is rising. But if you don't measure, if, and, and, and the, what would that look like? Today, if you looked at the Ghana currency in Bitcoin, it's setting all-time highs. That's only because current Ghana currency is going down faster. It's not setting all-time highs yet in the US because it's, the U.S. isn't debasing as fast. But a way to look at inflation, you could just say this, it, 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 it's the rate of theft in your economy. That's what inflation is. It's the rate of theft of the productivity that should be flowing to you in the form of lower prices from you to somebody else. That's what it is. Thank you, Jeff. You talk extensively about the concept of salary deflation. And I think the audience will appreciate better understanding that. Um, how I understand it is seeing the value of our labor falling down because life is becoming more expensive, because prices are rising, and even our currencies locally are depreciating. What do you see are the consequences of this happening at a larger scale, both in terms of increasing inequality and affecting global politics overall? So I have this, uh, I have this bel uh, belief, and we are all connected all over the world. And we might tune our, uh, to, to turn our eyes away and believe we were not, and because I somehow live in a, in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a more rich nation. 
But when other people are hurting because of the exact same thing that is created by money to supply, you disconnect people around the world. You disconnect them from all of the productivity, all of what should be happening in the world. Um, and it, and these, those consequences are huge consequences. Those consequences are political in nature. They're, 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 the, the entire world we live in is a kind of a consequence of, if you just said this, what would the world look like if it required theft in money to be able to trade with each other? That, what would the mere reflection of every emergent behavior, of all of us trying to just do our job, live a good life with our families, provide for our families, what would the world look like if, if the base layer required theft to be able to transact? Um, and you could just look at, and, and uh, even go further. What if, as technology went faster and faster, trying to give you more for less, the theft had to get greater and greater? Who would win? Who would win in that world, and who would lose? What would politics look like? What would, what would people say? What would, what would media look like? What would that system, everything within that system, look like to you? And it's pretty obvious. It would be a mirror image that would get worse and worse. And if you look at that mirror image around the world, you can feel this. You don't have to you just open up a paper, look at what's happening. You can see it getting worse and worse and worse, as it naturally would as technology is supposed to get make it better and better and, and your life better and better, and you able to work less and get more. And so con concurrently, ask yourself on Bitcoin, because simply, if you just simplified Bitcoin, all it is is an honest ledger. It's a truthful ledger. So if you asked, what would the world look like on a truthful ledger, you would also say, what would you expect the world to look like on a truthful ledger? You would see an emergent complex behavior of humanity emerging that would look totally different very, very powerful. You almost can't even put into words um, what this is going to look like for humanity because it means all of our productivity globally accrues to us in the form of lower prices and it keeps on accruing to us in the form of lower prices forever in perpetuity. Thank you, Jeff. Um, this is quite interesting, but I, I believe that there is also one, another layer that we need to have a better understanding of. Often, the system you described is simply blamed on capitalism. We have a sense that that's the world we live in, and in order for some nations to build wealth or some individuals to acquire wealth, they have to rely on this flooded system. But you argue that we are not even experiencing capitalism, and I want you to elaborate on that. Yeah, so if and, and, and this, again, should be pretty simple. It, it, it's made to look hard, but it should be pretty simple. There is no free market if money is manipulated. In other words, and there is no, if capitalism is a free market, there is no capitalism if money is manipulated. So our construct of what we think capitalism is and what a whole bunch of people in Africa try and go do to mimic U.S., which isn't capitalism anymore either. Um, it's crony capitalism. It's it, it only who controls the money. And, and think about the, by the way, this is why gold didn't work as a store of value, because, because through human history, if you could convince people that inflation was good for them, um, and you could control the money, that meant you extracted from the population money at an ever-increasing rate to your pockets. So through, so through human history, there's always been a, 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 a pendulum that tries to control money. And gold, because gold was always centralized, gold would always rewrite the rules, or people in power would rewrite the rules on gold and, and change the, change the uh, uh, gold, take it from you um, or reprice it to be able to take your purchasing power down because you could rewrite the rules in gold um, and, and keep that power. And Bitcoin is, because it's decentralized and secure, nobody can take that power from us, from you, from, uh, from, from anybody. And, and, 
and that's why it's so that's why it's so powerful. It ch literally changes. By the way, if you just keep going along that thread, it means that all of our history books, all of the way that economies were written, everything going backwards, are written with that flaw of human nature in how we could design societies, because we never had a money that could be decentralized and secure. So, so. So if all of our belief system is flawed based on we have to make prices go up when they should be coming down, but we don't have a money to allow that, then you could imagine all of the econo economics books are flawed, all of the, all of the school systems are flawed. It, it, I, I, I'm fascinated by this. I'm fascinated by something so simple prices should fall, and technology should make prices fall, that people make this complicated. It's the most simple process in the world. Um, the free market is deflationary. And, and everything else that is complicated about the eco economy to try to, del to convince you that economics is hard is a way to steal from you. Thank you. Um you know, many of us feel stuck, especially when you live in Africa or in the global south, as you said, far away from the money monopoly center. We, we don't have, not all of us have the ability to be able to hold our officials accountable for their poor financial decisions that affect each and every one of us. And beyond that, even the countries that seems to be more democratic, where citizens have more control, they still stagnate in a sense where politicians themselves don't necessarily understand the consequences of the financial system they are building their economies on. So for the average citizen, what advice will you provide in terms of building, building wealth, but most importantly, protecting your wealth and resources from the inflation so that in the future you can guarantee a better life for yourself and your children? Yeah, and, and, that, and that's why Bitcoin is going to be so important in that. Because what you're doing is you're storing your energy in something that can't be, can't be corrupted, can't be taken from you. Um, it, it, so that would be step one. But I also understand, I, I have empathy. If, you're, if, if you've been, if you're extraordinarily poor today and somebody came to you and talked to you about Bitcoin, that's a hard, that, that's a really hard step to come over. Because you're trying to pay your family, you're trying to pay for your food for your family. So it's it, so if you're in that situation, and this is where I have massive empathy. If you're in that situation, then you typically what ends up happening when, when you're when you're so stressed, you can't think at the level we're talking about right now. You stay stressed, and that's actually the control that the existing system has over you. Because what they come and they say, okay, we'll give you more money, and they keep you there. Um, and, and, it, and it makes it worse, and it makes it worse, and it makes it worse. So if, if this conversation has opened eyes, then you need to start thinking about saving in Bitcoin and understanding that. And if you, and if, and if you realize that technology should make prices cheaper, free market should make cheap prices cheaper, and you measure in a fixed unit currency like Bitcoin, then prices will, for you will get cheaper forever. And it, Bitcoin will look volatile, but it's actually volatile while prices are falling forever and versus your currency that you're currently measuring in that's volatile while prices are rising forever. That's the only difference. And so you'd, once you understand that, you'll start to save more in Bitcoin. More powerful still as you, as you understand that because it's an open monetary network, you can just move more of your time into it. And as you move more of your time and energy into it, you'll see what we see in this, in this audience, the most beautiful people on the planet building, building something for all of the people on the planet. And so, so, so what, why I'm so encouraged by what's happening in Bitcoin is it's unstoppable. It's unstoppable. And it's unstoppable because it's who we are. It's unstoppable. And, and who benefits most or who can benefit most? The people that are furthest away from the money monopoly today. Most monopolies do a, a similar thing. 
when facing disruption from technology. They try to block the technology. And, the, and the, why they block, block it, it, why they try to block it is they're, they're most advantaged by the uh, monopoly. So this happens all through technology. So Netflix versus Blockbuster, same thing. Kodak versus digital camera, same thing. This always happens in technology. People furthest away go first. Africa is the furthest away from the money monopoly. So the same things that, that you look for when you look at the US and you look at all the success, and a lot of that success comes from stealing your money. You have an opportunity to front run that onto a new monetary system. You literally have, and, you, you're, and, and what ends up happening is technology goes first because the people furthest away that get most hurt by the monopoly get to go first on the new technology. They, they're most hurt and they move first. And that emergent quality that them moving faster and faster, Gridless is, uh, Eric and team are, are, are here. What they're doing and what that's going to mean for abundant energy in Africa what it's going to mean for communities in Africa that are going to start to see this before many of the people in the money monopoly see it is going to be very, very powerful for Africa. Um, you know, what our motto at the Africa Bitcoin community, uh, as you can see on the screen, is that Bitcoin is a currency of humanity. And what we mean by that is the fact that we understand how unequal the current monetary system is, and we know that somebody earning in Ghanaian cities or in Nigerian Naira or in, in Kenyan shillings um, literally doesn't have the same privileges as somebody who is earning in dollars. And we understand that uh, we live in countries where some of us have to pay the price of bad decisions by politicians and um, over time we, we work harder and we become poorer. Um, so in the end, the value of Bitcoin in the U.S. is the same as the value of Bitcoin in China, in Nigeria, in Botswana, and so on and so forth. So on that basis, we are very hopeful that with Bitcoin, we can achieve a certain level of monetary equality in this world. So this will lead me to asking um, my final question, Jeff. Um, what are your hopes for countries like ours that are still struggling with unfair economic systems, um, that are facing unfair debts that we have to pay for many generations. What are your hopes when you see Bitcoin rising all over the place? So right, right now, when, when, when you say, what are the hopes for a country that has to pay, pay high debts? If you move your time and energy to Bitcoin, you are no longer responsible for the debt right now, tomorrow, today, you no longer were responsible for the debt that cannot be repaid because your time and energy is in, a, in Bitcoin that doesn't have debt. It's, it's, it, it's a monetary layer that accrues to you. So all of the abundance and technology forevermore will accrue to you. Now, if you spend your time in the existing system, yelling at it, marching against it, aggregate, trying to create enough money inside it, you are responsible for all of that and you're going to make it stronger. So what do I hope for? I hope more people open their eyes. I hope more people understand what's happening here and move more of their time and energy into Bitcoin and let all of the nonsense that's going to happen in the existing system keep happening, but not affect them have them move forward, build faster, spend more time and energy with incredible people building a parallel system that takes humanity in a very, very profoundly positive spot, place. Thank you so much, Jeff.